Coming up. You're sick. You're, you'll never get well. A disorder with no cure. I'm just going to have to go home and live with this. And her body was wasting away. She was literally hours away from internal organs are going to shut down. Find out how hope heals. And my heart is just pounding like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, you know, oh, my gosh, I've never known a Jesus like this. On today's 700 Club. Well, welcome to the 700 Club. Vice President Mike Pence is in the hot seat again. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is giving him an ultimatum. Remove President Trump immediately by way of the 25th Amendment, or the House will move to impeach the president. Meanwhile, federal authorities have made at least 60 arrests and opened two dozen cases of domestic terrorism against rioters who invaded the Capitol last Wednesday. Dale Hurd has the story. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is set to bring a resolution today calling on Vice President Pence and the Cabinet to use the 25th Amendment to remove President Trump. But Pence is not expected to do so. And that means the Democrats will then turn to impeachment. Pelosi told CBS 60 Minutes program she's ready to impeach Trump a second time, something that has never been done in our nation's history. I like the 25th Amendment because it gets rid of him. He's out of office. Uh, but there is strong support in the Congress uh, for impeaching the president a second time. Pelosi is readying a single article of impeachment, charging Trump with incitement of insurrection. At least 200 lawmakers support the resolution, but so far no Republican has publicly signed on. I think the best thing would, for the country to heal would be for him to resign. The next best thing is the 25th Amendment. But Republican Senator Ben Sass said he would consider any impeachment articles brought by the House against President Trump. The president is blamed for inciting the violence at the Capitol with these words. We're going to the Capitol, and if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. The president later tweeted, be peaceful, but it was too late. Rioters inside the Capitol could be heard chanting, hang Mike Pence. <laughs> The attack left five people dead, including one Capitol police officer, Brian Sicknick, who died from injuries sustained during the attack. One of the rioters, Ashley Babbitt, was shot and killed by Capitol police. Senators Lisa Murkowski and Pat Toomey have called on the president to resign. I think the best way for our country, Chuck, is for the president to resign and go away. But Senator Roy Blunt says there's no way the president could be removed from office before January 20th if he doesn't choose to resign. Meanwhile, there have been at least 60 arrests and 25 domestic terrorism cases have been opened in the wake of Wednesday's Capitol breach including Eric Gavilek of Munchell, Tennessee, allegedly seen with zip ties inside the Senate chamber, and Cleveland Grover Meredith Jr., accused of bringing an assault rifle to D.C. and threatening to kill House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. What happened at the Capitol has officials preparing to ramp up security for Joe Biden's inauguration, but so far no plans to change the location of the event itself. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Well, it's tough making predictions in this environment, but I'm, I'm fairly certain Mike Pence isn't going to invoke the 25th Amendment. That amendment is d designed for incapacity of the president. It's not designed for this kind of uh, action. Uh, I don't think we have anything in the Constitution other than impeachment for this kind of action. So what will happen? Uh, there's just not enough time to have the full hearings that you need to have. Uh, so my prediction will be the Democrats will proceed with it uh, and then table it uh, and wait for the new Congress to be seated. And then uh, after Joe Biden has had some time in office, probably 100 days, they'll bring it back up again. And the intent isn't to remove him from office because obviously he won't be in office anymore. The intent will be to keep him from ever holding office again. And so that will be part of what the uh, Senate will cons consider, and there'll be a trial on this, and we'll get to uh, the bottom of what happened uh, last Wednesday at the Capitol. Uh, I said it before, I'll say it again. I think the country owes a great debt of gratitude to Vice President Mike Pence 
and to the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Uh, when it was the crunch time, they stood and they held to their oath of office and said, uh, we will not overturn the results of an election. Now, you can disagree on was the election stolen or not, but the, the role of the Congress at that point in time on Wednesday was to merely count the, the electors, what the states had already ratified. And so we need to look into what happened. Uh, we certainly need to clean up our election procedures. Uh, we need to restore confidence in the ability of the ballot box to truly change our government. Uh, all of these things need to happen. Uh, we need to take a giant step back and take a long look at what happened in November, but also what happened last Wednesday. In other news, what do you do when riot breaks out around you? Well, that's what a CBN videographer faced when this, uh, at, this, at the Capitol uh, last Wednesday. John Jessup brings us his story from our bureau in Washington. John? That's right, Gordon. CBN News photojournalist Mario Gonzalez was there for a pre-scheduled interview with a member of Congress that was ultimately canceled. He ended up being there for about 13 hours. I asked him to walk me through that day through his own eyes. You were up on Capitol Hill way early Wednesday morning. Can you describe the scene? Because we knew that it was going to be a big day, uh, I, I had to get there early. So I got there at, at about 4.45 in the morning, uh, just hoping and praying that, that, that there was a spot available. Some of the other cameramen on, uh, on, 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 on the location were kind of giggling and laughing at me as I walked up with all my gear. Like, you're, you're number five, we're, we're having to turn away. He thought about setting up at an outdoor location for media. And I was like, no, it's going to be too cold. But instead then, uh, took a gamble. I think I'm going to ask for forgiveness and, and park right here. <laughs> and so that's what I did. A decision with divine implications for his protection and spiritual intervention. Mario eventually made his way to the Capitol building. You can easily start to feel the atmosphere kind of change that, okay, this can potentially become a major news story. So the cameraman in me, the journalist in me was like, okay, let me try to figure out a way how to get out there to go, to go see what's going on. So that's when I started to make my moves. Uh, so I get up the escalators um, and my first view is a Capitol Police officer sitting down on a chair and medical staff attending to him. And they're, and they're cleaning out his eyes. I immediately s changed. I went from journalist to prayer warrior. And um, I got up the escalator and I saw uh, maybe around six, six uh, Capitol Police officers being attended to by, by medical staff. And my heart just sunk. And so I'm there, I'm looking at, at, at these police officers and I just started to, to pray. A response that captures Mario's heart and mentality. He saw other officers hurt and started to pray for them, but was confronted. Police officer ran up towards me, no filming, no photos. And I'm like, I'm not. He's like, I said, I'm here to pray. And he was like, what? I was like, I'm here to pray. I want to pray. Thank you. You and your coworker, Abigail Robertson, who covered Capitol Hill, you both see this as a mission, not just an assignment, but a mission. We do. This is an opportunity that not very many photographs get, and that they, this ministry has trusted me with the responsibility to capture what takes place at this location uh, is a great honor. Did you allow your mind to wander and think the worst? Uh, no. Why is that? Well, uh, my time living in, in Israel, uh, I think, prepared me for moments like this, where you learn to keep your head on a swivel and you learn to be prayed up. I think that God's given me the grace to walk, to walk this out, to, to, to be in a place uh, like this during a time like this, to be able to be able to, to handle myself professionally and, um, and that's the way I should. A valued member of the team. A lot of the photos in that interview with Mario were shots he took. To see more of his images from the day, go to CBN News Instagram page. That's at CBN News. Well, two major developments over the weekend dealing with big tech and potential free speech issues. First, Twitter permanently suspended pr President Trump's account. Then Google, Apple, and Amazon banned the Parler app, an online free, free speech competitor to Twitter that's become a haven for conservatives. Parler is completely offline today after Amazon Web Services 
services took them down. Parler's CEO, John Mate says big tech companies claim that it was somehow responsible for the assault on Capitol Hill, but he told Fox News that it never allowed violence on Parler and that the service doesn't even have a way to coordinate an event on its platform. And he says this could be the end for the service. They've given us no legitimate remedy. Uh, they've tried to, you know, ask us for, you know, to cooperate with them on a few things. We've tried to give them everything. Uh, that they wanted, you know, of course, without sacrificing our principles, but there were remedies to do it, and, and they just don't care. They, they just don't want us on the Internet. They just want to get rid of us. Conservatives call this a big tech crackdown on free speech, and they point out that many others have posted threats of violence on Twitter with no consequences. Republican Congressman Devin Nunes of California says the suspension is an antitrust violation and is calling for an investigation. While the post-holiday surge in COVID-19 cases is hitting America hard, we now have some 22 million cases overall and about 30,000 deaths since the new year. A more contagious variant has spread from the UK to the United States. Another from South Africa has not yet been detected here. Meanwhile, the push for vaccinations is growing. President-elect Joe Biden saying he'll release millions of doses rather than hold them back to ensure a second round is available. Meanwhile, experts from the World Health Organization are going to China to meet with their counterparts there. But, Gordon, it's unclear if they'll go to Wuhan where the pandemic began. Well, CBN medical reporter Lori Johnson is here to tell us more about the developments. And, Lori, let's first focus on the U.S. Uh, I'm hearing a lot of people say, why wasn't there some kind of federal coordination to deliver the vaccine? Can you walk us through what are the obstacles to, to getting vaccines delivered to people? Well, Gordon, each state is handling their own vaccine rollout, and the main obstacle up until now has been these constraints and these restrictions that the vaccine can only be given to people who are in nursing homes or also health care workers. And that's what the CDC advised, but that's going too slow. Only about a third of the vaccines that were distributed to the states in December have been put into the arms, and there's a lot of pressure on states to open up the vaccine availability to senior citizens who live at home. And so the good news is that's what we're seeing happening and starting to happen. So people who are living at home, who are over 75, and in some cases even over age 65, should contact their doctor or their local health department to sign up and see what's happening in their state and see how they might uh, register and get an appointment for a vaccine if they want one. Uh, I, I kind of don't understand where the CDC is coming from here. Uh, why, why would you ever want to limit it? Uh, why wouldn't you make it available to anyone who is in the at-risk po population? Absolutely. So back in December, the CDC sort of started to prioritize, and these were really just recommendations, prioritize who should get it first. And they said that the first people who should get the vaccine are nursing home residents and health care workers. And many governors have adopted that rule. Um, but, but the problem has been that the good news is a lot of the nursing home residents have gotten theirs, but a lot of the health care workers haven't. That's just been a very slow process. There were the holidays and whatnot. And so uh, governors have been hesitant to open up to move on to the next phase until all the health care workers who want a vaccine have gotten theirs. But now they're saying, no, we're going to go ahead and continue to vaccinate the health care workers and move on to the next phase. And that's elderly people who live still live in their homes. Well, I would encourage every governor, please open it up. Uh, there's a pretty big spike happening, and a lot of people have died uh, just since Christmas. And let's, let's get this to the vulnerable people who need it and do it as soon as possible. Well, uh, let's look at uh, the World Health Organization. Uh, I'm hearing that the labs in Wuhan have been scrubbed clean of the data. Uh, what's, what's the point anymore of going to China? Right, that's a very good point. The Chinese uh, government, the uh, communist government there, has really been slow in allowing outside investigators to come in and try to determine how the pandemic started. But the World Health Organization is sending officials in there. The Chinese government has said that they could come in. And what happens from this point on remains to be seen. We can only hope and pray, Gordon, that the truth will be uncovered because the purpose of finding out how this pandemic started is to make sure that it doesn't happen again. And that would be wonderful. Uh, but at the same time, I know too much about 
virus reservoirs, and uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to get some kind of outbreak from animal populations that cross over to humans. So on that dismal note, thank you, Lori. My um, pleasure. <laughs> and again, let me underline to anyone who's in, in authority at a hospital, and anyone in, in state government, uh, there's not really a federal solution. Each one of our states um, runs their own health care systems. If you're a doctor, say, in New York, you can't come to Virginia and practice. Uh, each one has its own licensing and its own approval process. So trying to have a federal solution here doesn't work. But there should be a coordinated solution. And please, uh, if you have vaccines available, make sure they get, the, they get delivered to people in need. Terry? Well, up next, a woman's place is the House and the Senate. Many of the newest Republican members in Congress are women. What's behind this pink wave? And then later, rushed to the ER, this mother of two weighed just 82 pounds and had a body temperature of 83 degrees. Even worse, doctors couldn't cure her condition. So how was she healed from 25 years of pain? You'll find out later on today's 700 Club. Your news channel, your shows, the stories you care about. Anytime you want, anywhere you want. Download the CBN News app today. Hi, this is Pat Robertson. We don't know what the future holds for different tech companies, but we always want to be able to share the good news through the media. So I want to invite you to watch our program on CBNFamily.com or download the CBN Family app. This way you can have direct access to the 700 Club and other specials from CBN, and you won't miss a thing. Now just click below to get more details and watch with us. Tomorrow. I felt uncomfortable in my own body. A life ruined at just three years old. I was no longer interested in dolls because it was unsafe. One woman's search for the light. That was really the starting point. And her discovery in an unlikely place. The love that you're seeking, you're not going to find here. Tomorrow on The 700 Club. Stay connected with CBN News all day across our platforms. Well, the new Congress boasts a record number of women, including more Republican women than ever before. It's quite a comeback for the GOP after significant losses in 2018. So what led to this year of the Republican woman? Tara Mergener explains. Republican women serving across both chambers jumps from the 2018 number of 22 to a record-breaking 36, many of them turning blue seats to red in key districts, helping to narrow the balance of power in the House. I am Michelle Steele. I approve this message. A campaign cycle so successful that it has a new name. This is the year of the Republican women. With women winning 10 of the 14 seats, Republicans flipped in the House. Young Kim. She brought Democrats and Republicans together to protect domestic violence victims. They took various paths to D.C., from replacing retiring incumbents to making the leap from state legislatures, or like Representative Young Kim of California, winning on the second try. A lot of women were just frustrated. And we're not going to leave it up to just the men <laughs> to do the job. So I, for one, is not a quitter. As you know, I have run in 2018 for this very same seat. And I just wanted to get things done. And I'm just glad to be a part of the uh, many women that were elected in this election cycle. I've grown a small business here and fought to create jobs right here. This outcome is a far cry from the 2018 midterms when Democrats ushered in a deluge of women, many of color, into the House ranks. Republican women saw the gains that Democratic women have made in recent cycles, and particularly in the 2018 cycle. 
and um, try to make the case to their voters that they need to be a part of the representation in Congress of both parties. While campaigns and credentials are key, their success also reflects the GOP's 2020 push to recruit, endorse, and invest in diversity. The media and insiders can go to half of the Republican freshman class are either women or minorities. Immigrants from Iran and Korea, uh, and uh, Ukraine. They have a member of the Cherokee Nation. It will help them show that the, D the Democratic Party doesn't have a lock uh, on diversity. Kim is one of two Korean-American women elected. We have an obligation to make America great uh, by bringing all these different unique voices and different perspectives and backgrounds. At 32, Representative Kat Kamek is the youngest incoming woman on the GOP side. I never said vote for me because I'm the youngest or vote for me because I'm a woman. When it comes down to it, we just need patriots and people that love this country and and see see the problems as opportunities for us to really overcome and, and to serve. After the election, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi even recognized the accomplishment. It doesn't mean we have uh, shared views, but hopefully we can find common ground. It's unclear whether the olive branch will extend beyond words, with Democratic and Republican women not seeing eye to eye on a number of key issues, including abortion. When she found out she was pregnant, the doctors advised her to abort me. We're going to be very, very vocal on the issue of abortion and pro-life issues. And using that platform as the youngest Republican woman in the country, I think it's important because I think it is really my peers, um, my generation that is most most impacted by the issue of abortion. Despite the gains, women still fill only a quarter of the seats across both parties. But if 2018 and 2020 are any indication and the current focus continues, numbers are only expected to grow. They need to bring more women to the party and more women candidates into office. So I see that them largely impacting the campaign efforts uh, more so than, than policy at this point until they get the majority back. So they will be very energized in their recruitment efforts and their fundraising efforts with their eye on that prize. Republicans remain aware this will be a marathon, not a sprint in terms in terms of matching or passing the number of Democratic women in Congress. Still, they hope history is on their side in 2022, since the party controlling the White House usually loses seats in midterm elections. In Washington, I'm Tara Mergener, CBN News. Well, our political future has certainly been scrambled recently, so who's, who knows what's going to happen in 2022? The good news is there'll be another election, so okay, we all get to vote. We just need to make sure that our voting is, is proper. What a wonderful thing, though, the, the, the amount of diversity that's coming into our government, um, not just gender diversity, but ethnic diversity. I think it's absolutely wonderful, and I applaud it. It's, it's really good. So, Terry, you're, you, you're going to run? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's unequivocal. <laughs> Not happening. You're happen sure yet. about this? I am sure about that. Yep. Um, I'm not running. <laughs> Anyway, coming up, talk about the end of the honeymoon. Shortly after this couple wed, they found out they were more than $100,000 in debt. How could they pay it off and save their marriage? We want to hear your story. Send us a message or call us 1-800-700-7000. He founded a global ministry, interviewed world leaders, was a leading presidential candidate, and he has walked with the living God. In Pat Robertson's latest book, discover the principles that guided this extraordinary life and how they can shape your future. When you become a CBN partner, we'll send you your copy of the highly acclaimed book, I Have Walked with the Living God. Call now. The Hartzog had more than $100,000 in outstanding loans. They figured they'd make the minimum payments and then pay them off eventually. Then the couple had a change of heart. They wanted to be more than just debt-free, and here's how they accomplished that feat. 
Anthony and Janilka were married in 2016, but it wasn't until after the honeymoon that they realized they were carrying a combined debt of over $114,000. So it came from, I went to undergraduates, I had an undergraduate loan, uh, a couple credit cards from us just shopping. Uh, she went to a private school for her master's. So that was a ton of debt. That was about 60,000 in itself, about half of it. And then uh, a new car that I got when we moved down to Dallas. I felt like we, you know, will pay it off whenever we pay it off. There's no rush, just kind of like how everybody else does. You, you know, you have car payments, you have these student loan payments, it's just part of life. Since they had good paying jobs and the ability to make monthly payments on what they owed, initially they both were unconcerned about carrying the large amount of debt. I'm a director at an IT firm and Januka is a manager in, uh, for mental health counseling. I got debt, it will be paid off at you know one day in the future. However, Anthony began to reconsider his attitude toward carrying debt. It wasn't just paying off the debt, it was creating generational wealth and it was, it was um, being able to save more, being able to give more to our family, to our friends, to you know our church, to whomever needed it without, without hesitating to do it. Anthony also got serious about his faith. He was able to convince Janilka to work with him to eliminate their debt. I'm going to church now. I want to be a part of it. I want to support. So we made it a line item in our actual budget. So the same we were, we were budgeting for food, for clothes, we were also budgeting for our, our tithing expense as well. I feel like once we started, it just was like, okay, we can do this. Anthony signed his car up for peer-to-peer -peer rental. They also started a dog watching service. I work from home full time, so I was getting off by 4 p.m., so I kind of had the rest of my day to do things. Uh, so we started working at a gym. I'm also a therapist, so I was working at a private practice on the weekends and in the evening sometimes. So yeah, that, those were the main things. And then we started a cleaning business out here as well. <laughs> as we were raising our income, we were tithing and the money that we were tithing, it was never felt because we were always getting it back. We just knew that, you know, we it's not our money, it's God's money. It was really funny how both of them kind of happened around that same time, starting that financial journey and also starting that religious journey. As the Hardzogs tithed while paying off the debt, they started seeing God's blessings. It was always a windfall that came into play. Um, end of the year, I got a huge, a huge bonus and raise, and that was another windfall. And so we were seeing windfalls as we were, as we continued to tie. Oh, it was fun. We were, we were like using like a temperature thing and scratching it off. Like, okay, forty thousand more, and we kept it on the fridge, and we had conversations about it. So it was like, let's try to pay off this amount of money this month, and we were keeping track of it like that. So. Once we started hitting little milestones, like 10,000, 15,000, uh, we started celebrating. And in just 23 months, the couple paid off all of the $114,000 debt. The Hardzogs are now able to travel and enjoy their lives and do so giving all the glory to God. Without God, you're unable to do certain things. And I think that's part of it, um, to provide and give as much as you can. And the only reason we're able to do that is because of him. I think that that goes back to us like not stopping that, that tithing. Now it's kind of, it feels natural. Now it's like, this is the way it should be. It should have been for a while. And, um, but not having that shackle is just, it's amazing. It's amazing what happens when you just follow what God tells you to do. When you uh, live in accordance with his word, then he opens up the windows of heaven and he pours out blessing. And Anthony and Janika, they, they've learned that. They've lived that. And here's the promise, and you can bank on it. It's from Malachi chapter 3. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. When you realize that God watches over his word, he stands by it to perform it. He wants to do it. It's the only time we get to test God is we get to test him with our tithe and with our offering. And if you want to start doing that, the start of this year is a wonderful time to dedicate yourself to so God this year, 2021, I want to do it your way. Terry? 
Well, Tim and Juanita are raising their five grandchildren alone, and it hasn't been easy. Not long ago, their cupboards were empty and the fridge was bare. But today, this couple has more than enough to feed their family, and it's thanks to viewers like you. Naya Garcia and her siblings are being raised by their grandparents. When I talk about my grandparents, I take them as my real parents. They've had that place in my heart for as long as I can remember. They've just always been there for me. They showed me that they loved me because they didn't give up. Naya's grandparents, Tim and Juanita, both work to support themselves and their five grandchildren. I love my grandkids and I wanted to keep our family together. They were in a situation where I had to step in and take care of them, and I did. My grandkids are a godsend. They're a blessing because they have helped me grow in my faith, helped me grow as a man. They've helped me grow in love. I grew up in foster care and I didn't have a family. They're everything to me. Even with a dual income, sometimes their paychecks didn't stretch far enough to cover all the bills and pay for groceries. There is a lot of challenges that goes with having a big family and not being able to feed them. There were times when we didn't have anything on the table. We had the refrigerator, but the light was off. You know, the cupboards were bare. That's frustrating when you have a family. You feel like a failure. Then they started getting groceries from Dayspring Church, a partner of Operation Blessing. It's just completely changed our lives. I'm not worried my kids are not gonna eat. It's much easier now for us. It's been a blessing. It put a smile on my wife's face. She would go in there and cook the food that we had. She would feed the kids and they would sit there and we would talk and laugh. You know, it made everything all right. God has been good to us through Operation Blessing. Now Tim has a higher paying job and he and Juanita rarely need help with food. They say they're thankful to the Operation Blessing partners who provided for their family when they needed it most. I just want to say a big thank you because it makes such a big impact and it may seem like a small thing, but it helps so greatly. We're very grateful. Thank you for being God's hand on earth here in Texas, here in Grand Prairie. You have been Jesus's face right here. And I know because he's allowed me to witness it firsthand, fed my family when we didn't have anything. Right when I wanted to give up, we wanted to give up. You were there. How many times on this program have you seen the opportunity to reach out and touch the lives of people like the Harris family? They're in Texas, but you know, CBN Partners, you are working in places around this country every day, and you're working around the globe as well. That's why we come to you today to say, help us in 2021 to continue to do the kind of work that's been done in the past by your kindness and generosity. It's 65 cents a day, $20 a month to become a CBN partner. Some of you've already done that. I wanna ask you today if you'd consider going up to the next level of giving because it makes such a difference for us. There it is. If you're a 700 Club member, you can go up to 700 Club Gold. That's a gift of $40 a month. If you're a Gold Club member, go up to the 1,000 Club level at $84 a month. We have 2,500 Club members. You can see the monthly amount there, $209. Or a founder comes in at $417 a month. That's $5,000 a year. In addition to knowing that you are touching and changing lives and meeting people right at their point of need, one of the other reasons we want to encourage you to either join or increase your giving is to receive Pat's latest book, I've Walked with the Living God. This is the story of Pat's life, how God has met him at every point of need in his own work, in his own life, in his own family, and blessed him. He shares all of that with you, and I know you'd love having it. You can also, by the way, receive instant access to the audio Audio version of I've Walked with the Living God. It's read by actor Kevin Sorbo. I think you really would love it. And then doing that, you can listen at home or on the go on your computer, your phone, your smart TV, or favorite device by using the CBN Family Act app. All you have to do is activate your streaming link when you join as a CBN partner today. Here's another way you can make a difference. Join using Pledge Express when you call. That's electronic monthly giving. Saves us some administrative costs, so even more of your gift goes right into the lives of folks like the Harris so we need to hear from you. Our number's toll-free. It's 1-800-700-7000. You really can make a difference. So start that today, won't you, Gordon? Well, in Myanmar, two parents worked long hours in the rice fields. They only brought home $4 a day. 
At that rate, they'd never be able to afford the surgery their daughter desperately needed. Six-year-old Few loved to learn, but she dreaded going to school because of her cleft lip. Some kids said I'm ugly. They made fun of me. When I couldn't take it, I tried to hide. Sometimes I didn't want to go to school. Few's parents work as rice farmers in Myanmar. Ever since their daughter was born, they've tried to save to pay for surgery. But their combined wages of just $4 a day have made that task impossible. When people mock my daughter, I get so upset. It hurts me when they laugh at her. Eight-year-old Nian has watched her sister suffer. My sister cry when other kids make fun of her. When that happens, I want to be there for her. Then there are Few's physical challenges of eating and drinking. She chokes, and the food and water spill out of her mouth and nose. That makes me cry, but I try to hide my tears from her. A pastor told the family about Operation Blessing. We quickly arranged for Few to travel to the city to receive free cleft palate surgery. The operation was successful and few soon had a new smile. When I look in the mirror, I feel so happy. Thank you for changing my life. And that thank you goes to you. If you're a member of the 700 Club, you're part of that. You're reaching out with hands of love and compassion to people around the world. Uh, Operation Blessing, we, we, we have operations in Operation Blessing where we help people who have no chance of ever affording a surgery, we come alongside them and say, we want to help you. God loves you. We love you. We want to show that very tangibly. So if you want to be a part of it, join with us. How much is it to join the 700 Club? Well, it's just $20 a month. That's 65 cents a day. Some of you can join at 700 Club Gold. That's $40 a month. 1,000 Club is $1,000 a year. That breaks out to $84 a month. At whatever level, when you call to join, make sure you ask for Pledge Express. That's electronic monthly giving, the bank doing all the work, and we can send as our gift to you Power for Life, monthly teaching CDs. So if you'd like those, call us, 1-800-700-7000, ask for Pledge Express. Or you can go to CBN.com and you give monthly on the Internet. You automatically sign up for Pledge Express. We also have a text to give now where you text the letters CBN to 71777, and it comes up with a monthly giving page. So either way, do it and say, yes, I want to be a part of it. I want to be a part of everything you're doing around the world. Well, Operation Blessing is one of the many ministries here at CBN. My father started it long ago after reading a verse from the book of Isaiah. But he's not taking the credit for it. He explains why in this excerpt from his latest book. Take a look. Hi, this is Pat Robertson with an excerpt from my new book, I Have Walked with the Living God, read by actor Kevin Sorbo. I hope it will be a blessing to you as you walk with God. I've taken as my own personal guide the word that Jesus spoke to his disciples. When you have done all those things which you are commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty to do. I made a firm and straightforward rule for myself. I gave the Lord credit for all the good things that I was able to accomplish, and I personally took the blame for all the bad. At this point in my life, I'm much more comfortable being attacked and insulted than I am being complimented. I can say that because I rely on the Lord to fight my battles for me. Get your copy today when you become a CBN partner. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com. Hello, this is Pat Robertson. I've written a book called I Have Walked with the Living God. In its pages, I've shared many of the things God has spoken to me. At one time, the Lord told me, and I quote, Do not fear the future, for I am the future. I can tell you that when you step out into the future, you step out into the hands of a loving God whom you can trust not only for tomorrow, but forever. 
In Pat's dynamic latest book, you'll learn how to receive favor, wisdom, and discernment, how to overcome obstacles and live a life that is exhilarating and full of promise. I think this book can help you live that kind of a life. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to receive your copy today. Twenty-five years with no end in sight. The muscle pain never stopped. And doctors giving her more questions than answers. One of the doctors sent me away with, it's all in your head. So how was she finally healed? I'm seeing a miracle happen. Next on The 700 Club. Do you have questions about God? Call us. It's toll free. 1-800-700-7000 or check out this link. And welcome back to Washington for the CBN News Break. Israel is moving ahead with plans to build 800 new settler homes in the West Bank. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office says the move would include 100 homes in a settlement where an Israeli woman was killed recently in an alleged terrorist attack. That move would strain ties with the incoming administration of President-elect Joe Biden. He is opposed to expanding settlements. Well, CBN launched a virtual viewing of the Superbook this past Christmas season. Um, the, the uh, airing the episode of um, an episode in South Africa. Families gathered together in their homes to watch and learn about the birth of Jesus. Parents also could download the Superbook Adventure Guide online. The Adventure Guide included Christmas recipes, games, activities, and discussion points for parents based on the episode to provide entertainment for families staying at home during the global pandemic. Well, you can find out more about what CBN is doing around the world by going to cbn.com slash international. Gordon and Terry will be back right after this. From Marine lieutenants in the Korean War to building a global ministry, Pat Robertson reveals how God has directed him every step of the way. In his latest book, I Have Walked with the Living God, Pat Robertson shares his personal journey of faith and how an ordinary life can become extraordinary when surrendered to God. In this highly acclaimed book, you'll learn the keys to receiving daily favor, wisdom, and blessing, how to overcome setbacks and lean on God, how you can hear from God in your own life, Plus, enjoy fascinating untold stories from Pat's experiences in business and the political spotlight. Discover how life with God can be exhilarating and full of promise. Get your copy of I Have Walked with the Living God when you become a CBN partner. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com. Do you want to know more about having a relationship with God? Call us at 1-800-700-7000. I remember just walking through the wilderness and just mesmerized by the nature, the beauty, the silence. But in the midst of that silence, God began to reveal himself to me. God showed me what I had become. I just got up and I said, I need something greater than me. When you've tried everything and nothing's worked, cry out to Jesus. Tomorrow, I felt uncomfortable in my own body. A life ruined at just three years old. I was no longer interested in dolls because it was unsafe. One woman's search for the light. That was really the starting point. And her discovery in an unlikely place. The love that you're seeking, you're not going to find here. Tomorrow on The 700 Club. Nancy Johnson was truly hopeless. For more than 20 years, her body was ravaged by a terrible illness. Even worse than the physical aches and pains, the crippling feeling that she was never enough. I couldn't be perfect. I, I couldn't be perfect for my kids or my husband, and I just, yeah, I felt so much shame about that. 
It was pain keeping Nancy Johnson from being the wife and mom she wanted to be. At 24, just after giving birth to her first child, she developed fibromyalgia, a chronic incurable disorder that caused widespread pain and fatigue. The muscle pain never stopped, and so I was on this search, what am I gonna do? Nancy had a second child, but over the years developed more health issues, including severe allergies and thyroid problems. By the time she was 40, she was a shut-in, trying her best to take care of her family. The medical community had few answers, suggesting she try meditation and relaxation techniques to ease the suffering. One of the doctors sent me away with, it's all in your head, and that was just devastating. That was truly, it was, it was like hopeless, okay, I'm just gonna have to go home and live with this. Over time, Nancy became allergic to more foods, severely limiting her diet. As she grew weaker, the responsibility of taking care of the kids, the home, and Nancy fell largely on her husband, Rich. So we're coming and going, and, and Nancy is isolated in the house. That was hard. That was really hard. Adding to the daily pain and frustration, Nancy also battled depression and the voice constantly telling her she was a failure. I would worry in bed and think and things over and you're sick, you're, you'll never get well, you'll never make it, you're not good enough. Eventually, Nancy found meditation techniques from Eastern mysticism gave her a brief escape. It also led her on another search, beyond the pain and suffering, into her soul. There's something empty inside of me. There's, some, there's a search for who am I? What, what am I? I was angry at myself, and how could anybody love me? Because I felt like such a failure and, and so weak. Then, at 49 years old, Nancy landed in the emergency room. She was unresponsive, had a temperature of 83, and weighed only 82 pounds. She was dying of malnutrition. I very nearly lost her. Her, her body had just depleted. She was literally hours away from uh, internal organs are gonna shut down if we can't get her stabilized. It was, wow, that, I did some real. <sighs> Excuse me, it is some real soul searching that week. Soon, both of them would find what they were looking for. Within the week, Nancy was well enough to go home, but still needed constant care. Then a few weeks later, while watching TV, Rich came across a Christian channel. Pastor Joel Osteen was teaching about hope in Jesus Christ. I found that to be really uplifting. I really did. <clears throat> so I listened to one or two of them, and the family said, Nancy, you gotta come listen to this guy. He's, he's got some pretty positive things to say. They had both gone to church as kids, but the Jesus and God they had heard about were distant and angry. I'm listening to him talk about Jesus wants to heal you. And I'm listening to that going, and my heart is just pounding like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you know, oh my gosh, I've never known a Jesus like this. Like, this is a God who really wants to answer your prayers and heal you. Drawn by this message of hope, they tuned in for weeks. One day, Nancy prayed with Joel and asked God for his forgiveness and accepted Jesus Christ as her savior. I was astounded. I'm like, something huge just happened here. And I just felt this flood come in of, of like joy, like, oh my gosh. Then Nancy had a revelation. I was looking for an answer in every other religion, in every other avenue. I was trying to heal the soul. I just was going about it the totally wrong way. When Jesus came in, um, he, he loved me. He loved me back to life. He didn't care that I hadn't taken a look at the Bible. No matter what, he loved me. No matter how disabled I was, he loved me. Within a few weeks, Rich also gave his life to Christ. And it took me 50 long years to figure it out that I can't do it. I can't do it on my own. I tried, so I surrendered. I opened up my heart and invited the Lord in. And that's when the journey began. Now watching Christian television and attending church when Nancy was able, the couple started going to healing rooms to receive prayer for Nancy's health problems. And it was working. 
I could see breakthrough. I was able to drive myself. The allergies were breaking down. I was able to sleep. In time, every symptom had disappeared. The transformation was happening right before my eyes. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing a miracle happen. Nancy is grateful for the miracles in her life, but out of all of them, the miracle of salvation was really, you know, what I was after all along. Uh, all of this trying to find my health, trying to find the answers, it was just Jesus. It was, he's what I needed. He was the answer to it all. That's the real miracle, is the salvation. Because when he comes in, he saves it all. He's the savior of the health. He's the savior of the finances. He's the savior of the family. He's the savior of, he is, he is love. And in that love, everything becomes beautiful again. He is the great I am, the one who can meet any and every need that you have and wants to. His invitation is, come on to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You know, Nancy's husband said, you know, I, it took me 50 years. I searched and searched. She said, I looked, I looked to every other religion. I looked to every other path, every other option that I had, even, even medicine to take care of this emptiness inside and all the things I was feeling, and it wasn't there. But when she met Jesus, when they met Jesus, all of that emptiness was filled. And even the physical manifestations of illness were gone. We are meant to be in relationship with the one who created us with intention, with purpose in mind. Maybe you feel that same emptiness that Nancy did, that same, what am I here for? Who, who am I? What's the point and the purpose of my life? And then on top of that, the depression that comes when we realize we aren't perfect. We can't do things the way we'd like to. We can't do them as well as, as our neighbor or our sibling. And we feel less than. But the truth of the matter is we were never supposed to be able to do all of that. God wants to do it in us and through us. And when we try to do it apart from him, it just doesn't work. And it leaves us empty and longing for more. And then we start looking for fulfillment and love in all the wrong places. And we just make a mess of the whole thing. It is as simple as starting right now. See, you can't get good enough. The Bible says there's nothing you can do to make you presentable to God because he loves you right where you are. He understands and knows you. And he's inviting you to let him invade your life in every way possible. That's why we say we need to surrender to him. And today, if you're feeling any of those things that Nancy did, maybe this is your day to surrender to to just come to him and say, Lord Jesus, I didn't get it. I'm a savior, I'm a sinner and I need a savior and that's you and I recognize that. And so Jesus, I'm giving you my heart, my life, the good, the bad, the ugly. I'm asking you to change me, to fill me, to teach me your ways, to make me all that you created me to be and to give me life life abundantly as you said you would, Jesus. He'll do it, he'll do it. If you have someone, something in your life that you need to pray about, call us. There's always someone on the phone ready to pray with you. Our number's toll free, it's 1-800-700-7000. We wanna leave you with these words from 1 John. This is real love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Bless you. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow. I felt uncomfortable in my own body. A life ruined at just three years old. I was no longer interested in dolls because it was unsafe. One woman's search for the light. That was really the starting point. And her discovery in an unlikely place. The love that you're seeking, you're not going to find here. Tomorrow on the 700 Club.